Computers and computer programs are all about solving problems. In order to solve problems, we need to understand the idea of logic. To see how this works inside a computer's architecture, we can draw logic circuits using logic gates. If you look at your lights in your classroom, it can be in one of two states. It's either on or off. Your lights are controlled by a switch on the wall. If the switch is on, the lights are on. If the switch is off, the lights are off. There is no such concept as sort of on. The way this works is that when you press a switch, you close an electrical circuit allowing current to flow to the lights. If you turn off a light, you are opening a switch, meaning electrical current cannot flow to the light. Much like your light switch, computers are made up of switches too. You likely know from earlier in your course that computers work entirely in binary, the number system made up of only ones and zeros. Inside of your computer, in your RAM memory, and inside your CPU, there are billions of tiny switches that are storing ones and zeros by being either open or shut. That's how your computer works. Logic gates represent how these switches are used in computers. By combining these logic gates, we create circuits just like the circuits in your computer which give you the ability to store a file or play a video game, all by turning on and off switches. The first logic gate we'll learn is an AND gate. You can see that this AND gate will take two inputs and give one output. When both this logic gate's inputs are one, then it will output a one, otherwise it will output a zero. It can be beneficial to think of this in terms of switches and a light bulb. Imagine you had two switches in a line. If both switches are open, turned off, no power can reach the light bulb, so the light bulb is turned off. So here we have two zeros leading to no electricity reaching our light bulb, which we can also think of as a zero. Now let's close one of the switches. One switch is now closed, and so it passes power through it. This represents a binary one. However, the second switch is open, so the power cannot reach the light bulb, and so it's still turned off. Finally, we close both of the switches. Both switches are closed representing binary ones. This means power can reach our light bulb, and it turns on, representing an output of binary one. The next type of logic gate is an OR gate. You can see that this OR gate will take two inputs and give one output. When either of this logic gate's inputs are 1, then it will output a 1, otherwise it will output a 0. Let's see how this looks in terms of the switches and light bulb example. Instead of having two switches in a line, we have two separate lines with switches on them. If both switches are open, representing zeros, no power can reach the light bulb. This means the light bulb is turned off, representing a 0. Now let's say we close one of the switches. One switch is now closed, and so it passes power through it. The second switch is open, but the power can still reach the light bulb, and so it's now turned on, representing an output of binary 1. Finally, we close both of the switches. Both switches are closed, representing binary 1s. This means power can still reach our light bulb, and it turns on, representing an output of binary 1. Another common logic gate is the NOT gate. This differs from the other types of gate diagrams, as it only has one input and one output. When a NOT gate has an input of 1, it gives an output of 0. When it has an input of 0, it gives an output of 1. We can't really represent this with our light bulb analogy. It would be like someone had wired the light switch the wrong way, so that when you turn it off, the lights went on. The exclusive OR gate is a special gate that is very important in how your computer functions. We can make an XOR gate by combining a few other gates together, but thankfully there is an XOR gate we can use instead. This gate works similar to an OR gate, but with a key difference. With an XOR gate, if both inputs are 1, then it will output 0. This means it will only output a 1 if one of the inputs is a 1, and one of the inputs is a 0. So, 
Electrical switches can either be on or off, corresponding to a 1 or a 0. An AND gate returns a 1 if both its inputs are 1, otherwise it returns a 0. An OR gate returns a 1 if either its inputs are 1, otherwise it returns a 0. A NOT gate flips the input, so a 1 becomes a 0 and vice versa. An XOR gate returns a 1 if one of its inputs are a 1 and one of its inputs is a 0, 